vitamin C. All right, so one of the most important things to know is we don't make vitamin C as a species versus many other mammals, dogs, cats, elephants, us and guinea pigs do not. There are some other ones that don't, <laughs> which is why they used to study guinea pigs in the day. Funny us enough, like, oh, they don't have vitamin C. They must be closer. Like create our own? Yeah. Yeah, right. We, we do not. We don't own. produce our own. I we know, have to get I enough extra. Did. Yeah. Okay. A lot of animals too. Um, so the first thing to know. So let's just say we're going to draw a general, generalized molecule description here. So glucose or sugar and vitamin C. So the difference between the two is one hydroxyl group. That's it, they're otherwise identical. I think this has something to do with why maybe we don't make it, because maybe our body would like try and convert uh, it back and forth all day long, and then we'd end up with too much glucose if we didn't see, I don't know. Interesting. Interesting, <laughs> right. So here's how we depict using vitamin C to help kill cancer cells. Uh, this is my way of explaining it. There's, oh my God, talk about research. Mm -hmm. I can't even. So you come in, here's you. And you have been in a fasting state. I'm going to put that in parentheses. We want a, a blood sugar. I want it definitely less than, less than 100. And some people can tolerate less than 80 or 70. Somewhere around there. 80 is even better. And what that means is this cancer cell it is hungry for glucose. He's really, really hungry. So then, through our IV in your arm, we infuse high doses of vitamin C. Um, here, we'll do my little arm again. All right. So we say high dose vitamin C. So my way of explaining what high dose is, when you take a multivitamin and say it has 300 milligrams, which might be a pretty good standard dose. One, that's enough so you don't get rickets because the RDA is not based on optimal health. Or even if you have a chronic inflammatory state and you're fighting an incredible fight, how much more C you might need. Um, so out of those 300 milligrams in a multivitamin, if you had a really good GI system and you absorbed like, you know, 100 milligrams, like a third of it, that'd be pretty good. Mm. So high dose vitamin C, so oral, let's see on a daily basis, we've got about 100 milligrams absorbed. All right, and that's through your GI. With IV, high dose vitamin C, <laughs> 10 grams is where we start. So that's 10,000 milligrams, okay? And then that goes all the way up to say 50 grams or even 100 grams, depending on the perfusion of the patient. So Rachel is close to 80, right? 50, yeah, she, hers is, Around yeah, 160, yeah, 80, yeah. 80 grams, yeah, I'm trying, because it's yeah. cc's where she's like, oh, sure. <laughs> yeah, so, or even 100 grams, so if you would imagine, so 50,000 milligrams, because orally, of course, you'd end up with diarrhea, <laughs> you would not be able to take that much, if you could even get it down the hatch, my gosh, but the amazing thing is, when we put it in IV in the arm, the body just, it absorbs it, and takes, it takes it up, and uh, we can attribute a lot of this work to Linus Pauling, father of orthomolecular medicine. That's our big word for IV medicine, orthomolecular, because they got to come up with something. <laughs> so we've come in a fasting state, lowered blood sugar. We hook up this high dose IV vitamin C and this guy, he is hungry. So then the coolest thing happens. And it's like, you couldn't make this up if you tried <laughs> because this is so cool. So let's imagine that, okay, so we've got our hydroxyl vitamin C. He's so hungry, this is so close to the sugar, he says it's close enough to come. That's what we say. We're fine. Close enough to come. <laughs> so he uptakes that and it's got this hydroxyl radical group. He's going to try and put it through the same pathway, just as if it were sugar, to make it into energy. He's like, nah, we've got this little hydroxyl group. Nah, everything else looks great. I'm going to turn this into energy. And when he put it, puts it through that stage, that shunt, it adds another hydroxyl group. So two hydroxyl groups together makes H2O2. Eureka! That is the key to why vitamin C works. It's so cool. I mean, like the fact that they figured this out just still blows my brain away because hydrogen peroxide builds and builds, H2O2 builds and builds and builds, and eventually 
Mi muerte. <laughs> he dies. His little inner conscience all spill out. And we call this apoptosis, which is cellular death. He dies. So it literally creates hydrogen peroxide. Exactly. Which is a poison to itself. A poison. To, and it's a poison that our immune system uses everywhere in our body yeah. to kill bacteria, to kill viruses, to kill whatever it wants to kill. Huh. So that little happy little uh, uh, Pac-Man that I drew before, <laughs> right? So he comes across pieces of scattered, broken, used to be, right, cell debris. Yeah. And let's just say he came across a few pieces there. He's going to pick that up, chomp, 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 and he's going to put it in the endosyme. He's going to put it in a little vacuole, and then he's going to kill it. I'm going to use Star Wars. <laughs> he's going to kill it. And what is he using? So our neutrophils, our macrophages, all of them. What do they use to kill foreign particles? Hydrogen peroxide. That's what our natural biological system uses to kill. It's just like, and we figured out how to create that with something that we don't make, but we tolerate incredibly. And so the byproduct of that, hydrogen peroxide, our immune system knows how to clean up. And, and... This is, so if he went in and this macrophage and he was seeing some infection and he was killing it with hydrogen peroxide, he, you know, some would leach out to the periphery and then other white blood cells and parts of our immune system would go, oh my gosh, we're on alert, mm. right? Let's go back and tell the lymph node, hey, you guys, we got, we got stuff going on over here and they use chemotactic signaling. So hydrogen peroxide tells our immune system to upregulate and start doing some more. Like, go to that site. So we also do IV hydrogen peroxide for people whose immune system are just like, we want to bring it back up. So high-dose vitamin C IV, completely safe, well-studied, and we can use it with other therapies like curcumin or hydrogen peroxide or artensinate or multivitamin mineral therapy or whew, anything. It's, it's, it's compatible with almost everything. Some, some doctors and oncologists don't want you doing it if you're going through chemo or radiation or what... What do you say to that? So it depends on the oncologist or the doctor that's directing your care. Some are more educated than others. And some of the therapies that they're using, because uh, there's, when we talk about different oncology cancer therapies and drugs, there are those that are they're made to try and shut down right, the replication of cells. Mm -hmm. uh, then there's monoclonal antibody theories, which are trying to help your immune system attack that, in which case high dose vitamin C is not going to have right, any mitigating effect on what they're trying to do, but some of them are, aren't educated and so they just say, nope, don't touch my patients. They don't want things to interfere with their drug therapy. Mm -hmm. I understand that as a physician from the point of view that we haven't done a million studies because they will take one drug and check it with one substance at a time and patients are on multi-drug therapies, right? A breast cancer patient's going to be on X, Y, Z, and maybe they've started tamoxifen, or, you know, and then maybe they're doing something to suspend their uh, fertility system, and, 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 and no one has done that study. So you could argue with me from that standpoint that because we don't know what it would or wouldn't do in someone's physiology on drugs, one, two, three, four, okay. But when we're trying to affect uh, how we kill cancer cells and protect the system, this is a way of apoptosis. It kills cancer cells. We know, we know that. And it does not hurt or harm you, which is incredible. Mm -hmm. If you have a NOAA tumor that's already out of control, this uh, compared to a chemotherapy, right, drug, because chemotherapy is going to kill not just cancer cells, but it's going to cause an increased rate of apoptosis. Of, right. All those cells. Good cells. Good going cells. Going through a similar death process. Exactly. Um, so those, those docs that say, you know, don't do antioxidants, don't do high-dose vitamin C. Uh, my job as a patient's doctor is to communicate with that oncologist, say, okay, what's your reasoning? Like, what drug therapy, what drug regimen? Because high-dose vitamin C, long after XYZ rounds of chemo, can keep killing, if there are any, we call them rogue, cancer cells floating around out there without hurting you. Because they just can't keep doing chemo forever, if that's what they've chosen, mm -hmm. right? There's no way, eventually, there'd be none of you. So this is what happens when you do high dose IV vitamin C. Should should Rachel or should I be taking uh, oral vitamin C? Oral vitamin C. So why? What, right. what does that do? What does that do? So oral on a daily basis, and yes, there are say two or three thousand milligrams. Yeah, there are absolutely studies in this. So for oral, we say 
that you should take, oops, I'm behind my line, <laughs> to bowel tolerance. And that's different for everybody. Right? You want to support your system, but you don't want to end up with, it would cause chronic diarrhea. Um, and some people, 2,000 milligrams and they're done. Other patients have, they might take 10,000 milligrams. They slowly build themselves up. So doing that uh, oral vitamin C on days when you're not doing IV, you help maintain a higher level, which will also, right, those cancer cells every time you're asleep or if you're doing extended fasting, they're still gonna see that vitamin C in higher doses in your periphery because they're used to none. We make none except for when we eat it. So even oral can do really good things yeah. if you don't have access to IV. Absolutely, oral vitamin C. And Just for overall body health. Exactly, well, so collagen, right? <laughs> our, our, our aging, our anti, right? Collagen, the backbone of collagen is hydroxyproline, mm. technically, and vitamin C is the backbone of hydroxyproline. Mm. So when we have burn victims and so forth, and we use lots of high-dose vitamin C for them. So vitamin collagen C. and vitamin C go well hand in hand together. Vitamin C builds collagen. Yeah, I mean, you could take collagen, you'll ingest X amount of peptides, depending on how big or small, or, right? So um, but yeah, cool. vitamin C builds collagen. So to reiterate what we were just saying, yeah, yeah so vitamin C needs to be non-GMO uh, and not from corn, right? So it can be made from beet, tapioca. There are some natural food sources, but usually they're grown on cerveci or yeast. Mm -hmm. Just saying. So you have to read your labels and be careful about the Whole Foods ones. And not just from Costco. And not definitely not Costco. <laughs> it's definitely right now. It's definitely GMO. So just really GMO quick. Corn. Why? Yes. Why do I care if it's from GMO corn? All right. Why do you care if it's GMO corn? Um, where do I start? Yeah. So <laughs> we really need the GMO. I suppose but yeah. So topic, but. the whole right. So there's um, like for IV, for instance. Okay. There is GMO corn IV vitamin C. Is very inexpensive. Uh, it is patented. We have EDTA, that's they add the R group they add to it. Uh, most doctors, especially if they're um, trained by ACAM uh, or Dr. Paul Anderson and so forth, they are using non-GMO from tapioca or beet, right? So the best of the cleanest of what we can get. I, I've only ever had one patient in 15 years request vitamin C that was corn because she thought she was sensitive to tapioca. We couldn't get beet at that point in time in the market. So we tried it. I don't know if it made that much difference, but we gave it a go. <laughs> so we would just say it's a, it's a higher quality, more Abs natural sourced. More natural sourced because you, obviously you don't want the GMOs. Higher quality. Um, I mean, vitamin C, what do I would say it's higher quality because it doesn't have GMOs. I mean, for the yeah. same reason that you wouldn't want to eat them. Because, I don't know, there might be some goldfish or tomato or whatever genes in there that... Who knows? Yeah. Pick it. Pick your poison. <laughs> yeah, so why not pick non-poison? Hey, I would. So we love clean vitamin C. Uh -huh. Beets or tapioca? Beets or tapioca for IV. Absolutely. Not Costco. Read your label. Not big box. And, and don't say think that. that you have to have like condensed let's, let's oranges. Let's erase, every, erase every time that we've used a brand and just say not big box. Yeah, store. not big box star. Please yeah. don't sue us. Sorry, right? Yeah, maybe put <laughs> <laughs> a big black box line through that, like, <laughs> right, whole, just whole, bleep it. Minimally <laughs> <Yeah>. processed. <laughs>